In SQL, there are several types of join commands. In this chapter, we will take a look at the following. Inner join, outer join which includes left join, right join and full join. And also take a look at self join and cross join. An inner join in SQL combines rows from two tables based on a specified condition and returns only the rows where there is a match in both tables. If there is no match, those rows are excluded from the result set. For example, in our database we have two tables, jobs and job applications. The jobs table contains information about jobs, while the job applications table contains a list of job applications. If you want to retrieve a list of jobs and details about their respective applications, you can perform an inner join between the jobs and job applications. This join will connect both tables using their common column, which is the job ID, and return a list of the results. Now we're going to try our SQL inner join commands. Now to get started, copy the commands from the command file. You will find a link in the video description. So basically we will run the inner join first. So copy the inner join command and uh, paste it in the command area for hemlock. Now this command is going to create a table by joining details from the jobs table with details in the job applications table. Now the new table that it creates will have six columns. The job applications ID, the job applications email, the applied on, which is a timestamp, and then the job ID, which is specified here, job ID as job ID because we already have an ID field. So now we have to give our new ID field another heading so that it will be visible. If we don't do this, then we won't see the second ID field. Now, we will also be having the job title and the job category informations. And the condition for our join is stated here. Now, we want to make an inner join based on the jobs table on the job application using the ID from the job table to match with the job ID field in the job applications table. Now I will trigger this command and if you look on the table, because you have raw data here, you have raw data here and you also have table. So if you look on that table, you should see the ID column. Now this ID column is the applications ID and then here you have the job ID. So going from the first job application, it connected that application with its corresponding job. So this job application is for this job. And if you scroll to the bottom of this table, you should not find any empty columns because inner join will only select fields that have data for both sides of the join condition. So if there's an application without a job, you will not see it in this table. And if there's a job without any applications, you will also not see it in this table. An outer join in SQL combines rows from two tables based on a specified condition and returns all the rows from one table and the matched rows from the other table. If there's no match, then the other column will have null as the value. The difference here between the inner join and the outer join is that in the inner join, both tables must have some matching value for them to be included in the results. But in this case, the resulting table will include values that do not have any match from the second table, and that field will be shown as null. An example would be a query to get all jobs and their respective applications. But in this case, the applications data will be optional. 
meaning that some jobs will be shown without any application value. There are three types of outer joins. We have the left, the right, and the full. We will go over some queries to see these variations in action. So now let us look at outer joints. We'll start with the left outer joint. So first I will copy the command from the commands file. The command for left outer joint. So left outer joint is pretty much the same as the inner join. But in this case, even when both tables do not have matching data, you will still get response. So if you have some jobs that have no job applications, the left join will still give you results from the empty table. So let us run this command that will join data from the jobs table with data from the applications table, just like the inner join. But in this case, we will be using the left join, which is an outer join. So I will execute that and uh, we can see the results in the table. So we're selecting the ID, the job title, the application ID and the applicant email. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this table, you will see that we have some fields or some rows where there is a job, but there is no job application, but it still gives you the response data. But meanwhile, if you had run this with the inner join, like we did before, so we can go back to that. If you have done this with the inner join, you will not find any rows where there is no data in any of the columns. This is because inner join will only select all the fields that have matching data in both tables, but outer join will select from one table and then try to match from the other table if possible. And in this case, we have the left outer join. So for this command, the priority is the job, which is on the left. And the job application is optional. So if there's no data for job application, then it will still give you data for the job. That is why you have some empty values on the right side at the bottom. Next, we will look at the right outer join. So for this example, we will use a different approach. So basically we want to say, so here we want to say connect job data with location data. Now, the reason why I chose this example is because there are some locations that are not connected to any jobs. And in this case, our locations are on the right and they are the priority. So we want to match the jobs if we can, but if there are no jobs to match with the location, then we still want to see the locations. So I'm going to select the job ID, the job title, the location ID, and the location name. If I run that command, I should get a new table. Now this table, will have both jobs and locations. And if I scroll to the bottom of the table, I should see some locations without any jobs. And they are on the right side. That is why we have right join specified here. So the right side is the priority and the left side is optional. Now let us look at full outer join. Full outer join is like a combination of the left and the right. It will not treat either side as priority. It will simply get data from both tables. So in this case, we have jobs and locations. Full join will aim to get jobs data and locations data. 
and if there's a match, it will give you data on both sides. But if there's only locations data, it will give you data on the right side. And if there's only jobs data, it will give you data only on the left side. But for our database, we only have for our database, all the jobs have locations. So you will never find a row where you have a job without location data, but you will find some rows where you have locations without job data. So I can run this command and we will see what I'm talking about. So basically, if you scroll to the bottom, you will find locations without job data. But if we had any jobs that have no locations, then we would also see some job rows without corresponding location data. Self join in SQL is used when you want to combine rows from the same table based on a relationship within that table. It essentially treats the table as if it were two separate tables. For example, in our jobs table, Let's say you want to join each job with a different job that has the same title. This would result in a new table where each row is a job combined with another job sharing the same title. Now we're going to look at the self join. So first of all, I will copy the command from the commands file. Now this command will go to the jobs table and uh, treat it as two jobs table with the same data. And then it will try to join every row, every job row with another job row that has the same job title. So it's going to take the first job and look for another job with the same job title, then join them together. And as long as they don't have the same ID, it will keep joining more and more. So I limited this command to 100, the first 100 results because it can create a very, very long table because we have a lot of data. So try to do the same. Now, if I run this command, I should get 100 jobs. And for each job, it's going to join it with another job that has the same title. Like for example, you have the business analyst, which is the first job and you can see it's created many rows using the first job and it joins it with uh, job 477, 476, 469 and so on. Self join allows you to do this if you for some reason need to join rows with other rows that have some matching data. Cross-join returns the cross-product of two tables, meaning it combines every row from the first table with every row from the second table. The difference between cross-join and the inner and outer joins is that here you don't need to specify a, a join condition. It basically checks both tables, looks for the mutual column, and connects both tables for you automatically. Finally, we will have a look at a cross join query. So now I'm going to copy the SQL query for cross join from our commands file. Now this command will simply connect all job titles with their location names. So it will join the jobs table with the locations table. We will not specify our join rule, but SQL will check that and figure out which column to connect both tables with. So if you look at the jobs table,
you can see that the jobs table have a job location column that specifies IDs for different job locations. Now CrossJoin will be able to use these IDs to check the locations table and connect the rows based on this data. So if I run, so if I run the cross join command, I should see a list of job titles with their various locations.